internationally renowned flutist and National Endowment Jazz Masters recipient, Hubert Laws, is one of the few classical artists who has also mastered jazz, pop, and rhythm and blues genres. He has appeared as a soloist with the New York Harmonic, with the orchestras of Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, Cleveland, Amsterdam, Japan, and Detroit. He has given annual performances at Carnegie Hall and has performed sold out performances at our very own Hollywood Bowl. In addition, he has appeared at the Montreux Playboy and Cool Jazz Festival, and his recordings have won three Grammy nominations. Now, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Hubert Laws. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. <laughs> You've heard of uh, Kiss and Tell, right? Not Kiss and Tell, but the Show and Tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to show you how it works out when you're on stage and you have to also work out your sound system at the same time. And we're so sorry that you had to wait later, but we're trying to work out some issues. You know, family issues cost time. All of us come from some family, one way or another. So we know that there are always family issues here and there. And we were having some, you know, we, we know that everyone has uh, problems every now and then. So we're just trying to work out our sign, sound problem. But I did lobby to have them let you in so you wouldn't bake in that hot sun out there. <laughs> I'd like if you to know too that uh, this is somewhat uh, um, the first performance I've had when I um, didn't have my regular group. Uh, I recorded a CD some years ago. Well, within this past 10 years, I recorded a CD. Is that right, Joey? I think it was 15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stalling with time too. We have this. Um, uh, where I recorded some of the material I had written some years ago, but uh, I've changed the names and I've also changed the style because I've never had a full Latin or salsa band before. But I love the music so much. As a matter of fact, I began my career in New York playing with Mongo Santa Maria and influenced a lot of my, <laughs> you know, so it influenced a lot of the uh, the music that I wrote, and uh, we're going to show you what it's like here on stage. Provided we let's hear what your your violin sounds like when now this is amplified. <laughs> it was much better. It didn't sound like that during the sound check. <laughs> show and tell. That's what we're doing. Showing you how it's done during the sound check because it's very important, especially for our instruments, unamplified, you can hardly hear them. In the symphony orchestra, it, they write for them to be heard. That is, the composers write for them to be heard. Sometimes I hear people say, man, they, they don't have the flutes amplified in the orchestra. I hear them, I say, well, you don't understand because the composers know there's something called balance. So when the flutes are playing in the orchestra, they, have, they don't usually have percussion and all the, the, the other instruments that eclipse the sound of, of our instrument. So that's why we were waiting so uh, patiently to get this sound system worked out so we can do what we're going to do now. We're going to start with a piece I uh, wrote uh, years ago called um, Mean Lean, but I changed the title to fit the album, which is Baila Cinderella. It's a Sp Spanish uh, or a uh, Latin or salsa album, and I changed it to Lina Mesquina. Those who speak Spanish know what I'm talking about. By the way, this lovely lady here is from Cuba. Yeah. And <laughs> I was thinking about an ominous situation. I started my career with Mongo Santa Maria, and then I ran into Dayarin Santa Maria. 
And I asked her, do you know Mongo? She says, I don't know. And they're both from Havana. They're both from Havana. So she probably doesn't even know she has to trace her roots. She probably is related to him. Anyway, so you're going to hear a lovely talent. We're going to do this piece, Lena Mesquina. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, how about it for Joe Rotundi on keyboards here? <laughs> Dayarin Santa Maria, violin. <laughs> Alfredo Ortiz on congas. And the guy behind me played with Mike Band years ago. We were we weren't playing salsa so much, but the guy is so versatile, plays so many so many different genres. Uh, this is Joey Herrera. So the next piece we're going to do is uh, something I actually played at the Hollywood Bowl with Jean-Pierre Rampal. We did like a joint concert there with classical and jazz, and I wrote this little piece for that particular occasion. Uh, it's called Music Forever in Spanish, Musica para Siempre. Thank you. 
How about that lady, Nyreen? <laughs> That's on a CD. You know, you guys got in here free, right? <laughs> you shouldn't go out free. <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got every one of these pieces that we're playing is featured on that CD called Baila Cinderella. The only difference is Baila Cinderella is not there because I had a big band for that one. But all these other ones you can get on that CD going out. <laughs> I don't usually do that, but I, you know, I'm really happy about that that particular one because it, you know, it explores uh, a part of my career, of my life that I really enjoyed so much. Um, when playing with Mongo, we used to play downtown in uh, New York City at the Manhattan. They call the Manhattan Center. Every Saturday night, they would have uh, these wonderful, wonderful dancers. And as a matter of fact, it inspired me to write a tune called Medias Negras. Who can tell me what that means out there? Black stockings, black stockings exactly. They used to wear those black stockings, and uh, I was watching them dance. The <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. But anyway, you heard the other flute. You know what? This was an impromptu situation because, you know, this. I wrote this piece for three flutes, and, and Bobby... Shulgo, give him a hand, Bobby Shulgo. That's another story. That's another story I can tell you. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to spend most of my time talking up here today. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Bob, um, we, he likes to be called Bobby. But uh, we've known each other for a number of years. And uh, great flute player. He plays most of the classical and uh, we, the last time we worked together was uh, Mission Impossible 3. Yeah, we, we did the uh, recording for the soundtrack, Mission Impossible 3. But anyway, um, so he completed, he round out the three flutes we needed for that last piece you heard, Musica para Sempre. The next piece we're going to do is something I wrote uh, when I first signed with Atlantic Records back in New York City. Uh, this one's called uh, Muchacha. Estranya. You want to tell me what that means? Mu Strange girl, muchacha. Yes, muchacha. Muchacha estranya.
very tasty on that piano, isn't he? Joe Rotundi. Joe Rotundi. Yeah, I sort of uh, jumped ahead of myself. I was telling you a story about Medias Negras. Now we're going to play that piece. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's after that? You, I, I love this. You know why? Because it's all spontaneous. You know, when I... <coughs> That's what jazz is all about, spontaneity. I, was, I, I recall when I played, I, I played five years in New York with the New York Philharmonic and also with the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. And uh, when I was sitting there in the flute section, sometimes my colleagues were sitting there reading the newspaper. <laughs> and I wondered why I'm listening to this wonderful, you know, St Richard Strauss, you know, one of the famous, uh, uh, operatic composers like uh, Richard Strauss was one of my favorite. Wagner was as well. Um, um, but sometimes they don't have the flute parts playing all the time. So while they're waiting to play their part, rather than listen to that beautiful music, man, I, I just couldn't understand why they couldn't just revel in that beautiful music. It, but they were reading newspapers, going out in restaurants, stuff like that. Because we're in the pit. You know, people couldn't see you. We're in the pit. And then you've got the singers up there on stage above you, you know. But uh, anyway, why don't I start talking about that? <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know why. I know why. Because I'm comparing classical music or scripted music with spontaneity. So you see... Uh, there's a great deal of freedom. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody loves freedom. And this, is allow this allows us to express freedom in music. Now, Bob plays wonderful flute, and, um, but most of the work that we had to do, for instance, Mission Impossible, we had to stick to the, stick to the script. Every note that was written, we had to play it as the composer wanted it. But I, I've got another friend who played with the LA Philharmonic, it's Jim Walker. Remember Jim Walker? Jim Walker. And you know, he says, man, my greatest moments was when I played the solo on Daphne, Daphne and Chloe. It was written by Ravel. You know, it's a big flute solo in that. So guess what he did? He decided he was going to leave there and start playing some jazz. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. It's a true story. So, uh, uh, and now, what did I say that for? Well, we're about to play medias negras, as we say, black stockings. By the way, I wrote that for Mongo Santa Maria's group. Yeah, yeah. Poncho Sanchez also recorded this piece. You know, I don't know if you're any Poncho Sa Sanchez friends out there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, he recorded a couple of three of my pieces, you know, for Concord. Anyway, here we go, medias negras.
Okay, that reminded me of something too. I mean, uh, the last few weeks of uh, Mongo's life, uh, I was told by a good close friend to, who was his carekeeper, he says, Hubert, Mongo got that CD. This CD I'm telling you about. <laughs> he got that CD and he was listening to two cuts all of that CD over and over and over again. One of them was Baila Cinderella and the second one was Medias Negras. So every time I hear that, it reminds me of Mongo listening to this piece over and over again. Because, you know, he was, a, it was, he was a very strong conga player, but, he, but he, he, loves, well, he loves this music from Cuba. Uh, the next piece we're going to do is, um, I'm going to ask my translator to tell me what this means. Caras falsas. Caras, caras. Falsas. That's it. False faces. That's, that was the original title when I did it on the um, Land of Passion CD. So this is the Spanish version. It was also, a I wrote lyrics for that, False Faces, but uh, this is the instrumental version in the salsa vein. Caras falsas.
This is a spot where I'm supposed to talk a little bit again. This past week, there was a lot of attention given to the Lady of Soul. You know who I'm talking about because she's all over the news globally. the opportunity to record one one or two tracks with her I uh, was able Quincy called me uh, in New York to play on this track she did called daydreaming uh, and I did a couple of the tracks with her but it was such a pleasure to do something like that because the, it gives me a chance to express the variety of genres that I've been involved in for for a long time gospel salsa classical bebop, all of those. But we're about to play a tune, and they were playing the intro to it just now, of a gentleman that you didn't hear about, but wonderful composer, arranger. You probably know him through the work he did for the Mary Tyler Moore TV show. He wrote for Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Barbara Streisand, all of these well-known artists, but he remained pretty much in the background. Wonderful, wonderful talent. So he wrote the, the soundtrack for this movie called How to Beat the High Cost of Living. And I was going to Japan to play with this orchestra, and I called Pat. I said, Pat, you know, you wrote this beautiful song. And I want, I want to play with this orchestra over there in Osaka. So uh, he sent me the chart. It was so interesting because Pat didn't think it was much of this tune. He says, here, would you like that? I say, man, I love that tune. It's a beautiful, beautiful ballad. But, and it's called Song for a Pretty Girl. So you heard that lovely intro before I was able to tell you about it. But now we're going to do it again from the top, OK?
the reason why I brought up Pat Williams in the context of Aretha Franklin is because he passed away two weeks ago. And uh, it made me think of how often there are so many unsung heroes you never hear about, but contribute so much to our musical environment. Brings back a lot of memories. I know some of you out there probably had your first dance with your loved one or with your mate, uh, probably through some musical experience, some tune you hear reminds you. It always does that. That's how powerful music is. I am so happy to have my livelihood surrounded by that kind of aura of the music. Um, unfortunately, you know, I should say fortunately, you guys are here and you're experiencing something that's constantly being dwindled in so-called the musical arena where the music that's popular today is bereft of melody and harmony. It's loaded with rhythm, you know, some of the baser instincts that we have, but it's, it's the, uh, but, but it's, you know, it's the melody and the harmonies that really dig deep down into your emotions, you see, and often the music is sort of bereft of that, and it ref it's reflected in society, in the behavior of society. You know, because the music uh, is lacking those elements, those components, the melody and the harmony. Most people can remember melody. You got your snare on? I'm hearing a snare. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, boy, I feel like I'm lecturing again. <laughs> but you know, it's so important because we seldom get a chance to understand. You know, we see so much violence in the community, I mean, in, in the world. And we don't understand why. And often, it's really uh, propelled or fueled by something as subtle as music. I was quiet because I wanted you to think about that for a second. It's often propelled by something as subtle as music. A friend of mine, and I quote him once, said, structure dictates function. So true. Structure dictates function. And all right, so we go, we're going to go ahead here. Uh, what was the next one here? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The next piece is Tierra de Pasión. <laughs> and I'm talking about that right now, aren't I? Yeah. Tierra de Pasión. You want to tell us what that means? That's right, the land of passion. That's the name of that piece. Bob, I didn't intend for you to sit on stage the whole time, man, without <laughs> <laughs> But I think you want the best seat in the house, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two,
This next one doesn't need any introduction. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ross, Ross Shodak on bass. Ross Shodak on bass. Joe Rotundi, keyboard. Joey Heredia, drums. Alfred Ortiz, congas. Dairin Santa Maria. <laughs> and thank you, Bob Shogo. Thank you very much.